thank you for your kind introduction. And uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank for giving this opportunity to uh, introduce our uh, study. So today's talk is glycosylation regulates CD38 assembly on the cell surface. So, are they? sorry. How to recover? Ah, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> this slide shows the outline of my today's talk. So, first, introduction of CD38 and aim of this study and structural analysis of assembly. First, starting from the extracellular domain of CD38 in solution, then move to CD38 on the cell surface then functional significance of the assembly and regulation of assembly by glycosylation. Leukocyte cell surface antigen CD38 is a multifunctional protein and uh, glycoprotein having multifunction and uh, composed of large extracellular domain, transmembrane domain, and short cytoplasmic domain. The large extracellular domain has a catalytic activity, so CD38 is active enzymes. And also, uh, CD38 is concentrated in some specific membrane region. Um, biochemical definition criteria repeat last. <laughs> And uh, uh, such uh, association is important for its signaling uh, uh, to trigger signals. The enzymatic activity of CD38, uh, CD38 is a major NAD glycohydrolase in mammalian cells. To, uh, uh, that creates the and glycosyl bond linkage of NAD to produce ADP uh, ribose. CD38 can also generate cyclic ADP ribose from NAD. Cyclic ADP ribose triggers intracellular calcium mobilization in an IP3 independent manner. So uh, based on this enzymatic activity, to generate cyclic ADP ribose, CD38 is uh, important in various processes, such as trafficking of neutrophils and dendritic cells, or secretion of insulin or oxytocin. And uh, ADP ribosyl cyclase activity is high in apricia. And uh, uh, very interestingly, the protein structure of Apricia ADP ribosylcyclase and CD38 is similar. Uh, on the other hand, CD38 is associated with various supermolecular complexes within repeat rafts. Uh, in T cells, CD38, CD3, leak rat, and in B cells, CD38, BCR, CD19, CD81, NK cells, uh, CD38 and CD16, monocytes, CD38, MHC, cross-1, CD9, dendritic cells, CD38, CD83, CD111, B, and CD81. And this, uh, this association within repeat raft uh, is important to trigger the CD38 mediated uh, uh, activation or proliferation or uh, differentiation. Then, ah, and CD38, uh, anti-CD38 antibody is now uh, considered to be a promising target of multiple myelomas, daratum map course. Then the uh, aim of this study, uh, this slide shows the aim of this study. Uh, the topology of, overall topology of CD38 is very similar to the uh, to the other member of ADP ribosylcyclase family, uh, Apricia ADP ribosylcyclase and BST1. But uh, these two proteins uh, exist as dimer. But uh, CD38 
uh, uh, biochemical analysis suggests that CD38 uh, exists as tetramer. Sorry, R, missing R, tetramer. And actually, uh, the uh, C terminal helix, the orientation of C terminal helix of CD38 is different from those in a preceding variable cell cyclists or BST1. So, if CD38 make a dimer in similar manner, then this uh, alpha helix will crash. So the similar uh, type of uh, dimer structure is not possible in the case of CD38. So there's a completely different organization of tetrama, but the structural basis was not known. So the aim of this study is the, to explore the structural basis and functional significance of the assembly of CD38. So for the structural analysis, uh, we prepared the uh, full length, uh, uh, we prepared the extracellular domain of CD38 uh, for the crystallography. Then uh, during the preparation, we noticed that protein was partially cleaved at phenylalanine 288 to induce uh, uh, theta, uh, 16 amino acid truncation in the C, t C terminus. Then, so we decided to prepare both types, full length and C terminal truncated forms. Then, found that both uh, exist as both exist as homodimer in solution based on analytical ultra centrifugation and size exclusion chromatography. And the overall structure was. Not, uh, was sig uh, sig uh, not significantly altered by the truncation based on the cyclar dichroism spectrum. Then, after uh, eliminating the n glycosylation site by mutation, uh, we tried to crystallize full-length extracellular domains and C-terminal truncated extracellular domain. Then, as a result, uh, only the C terminal truncated form was crystallized. Then, most importantly, is uh, most important point is that homophilic interface interface was found in the crystal packing of the C terminal truncated extracellular domain of CD38. Before moving to the uh, to, we, before moving go, go further, I would like to uh, explain the concept of crystal packing. Uh, so this is the schematic uh, explanation. Uh, if uh, for the crystallization, uh, protein should be crystallized. But uh, uh, so if crystal packing is this way, then uh, based on the crystal unit, uh, asymmetric unit, we can uh, uh, gain the information of homophilic interfaces, although we should confirm the such interfaces in the different way. But anyway, this type of, uh, if we, if we, uh, we could uh, obtain this type of crystal packing, the interface can be suggested. But uh, in this case, in the previous study of CD38, uh, the crystal packing was this type. So, the, pre the protein was crystallized and the monomer structure was determined, but there's no information about the interface. So, but this time uh, we, are, uh, we succeeded to uh, obtain this type of crystal packing for CD38 for the first time. Uh, probably C terminal uh, truncation may have facilitated the crystal growth of this uh, crystal packing. Then, uh, this is the previous uh, work uh, and for the, for the uh, full-length uh, full monomeric structure of CD38 extracellular domain. And this is our structure, uh, C-terminal truncated one. And this is the superimposition. The monomer st monomeric structure was not significantly altered by the truncation, so uh, super mostly superimposed, but except the loss of alpha-9 helix and the fluctuation of the alpha-4 helix. But uh, in our case, uh, four types of interfaces, type 1 to type 4, were found. In, found. So uh, then uh, the next question is that uh, 
uh, do the interface exist also in solution? So, uh, for uh, so to investigate that point, uh, we uh, focus on the type one interface. This is the type one interface uh, between two alpha one helixes. And uh, glycine 68 is located in the middle point of type one interface. And, uh, to, and the, if glycine 68 is muted to, to E, uh, glutamic acid, such G68E mutation should disrupt the type one interface. So we prepared the G68E uh, mutated uh, extracellular domain of CD38 and uh, compared full length, uh, compared, uh, compared the wild type one by uh, uh, analytical centrifugation. Then, the, uh, then such mutated uh, mutation caused the uh, protein structure into, from dimer to monomer. And also, uh, based on the uh, chemical cross-linking using BS3, the, such cross-linking was lost by this mutation. So the results of the G68E mutation support the interaction between the alpha-1 helices of the extracellular domain of CD38 in solution. Then we try to identify the uh, cross-linking site of BS3. However, we couldn't obtain the uh, cross-linked peptide. But after the, uh, but uh, do, uh, among the several candidates, only this peptide uh, was lost in the dimer, uh, was lost in the dimer structure. So this peptide is uh, uh, located, should locate it to the type three interface. So the BS3 dependent cross-linking likely occurs via the type three inter interaction mode. So together with the C-terminal deletion analysis, we conclude that dimer via the type one interaction mode exists in equilibrium to, the fo to form a tetramer via the type two three interaction mode. And this, type, uh, this, this is structure is compatible with membrane association. So the uh, membrane spanning region uh, can orient it to the same uh, direction. So it's uh, compatible for the membrane association. Then the uh, next question is, the, are the interfaces present in CD38 on the cell surface? To, that, to uh, check that point, we use the site-specific cross-linking on the cell surface with an expanded genetic code. This slide shows the method. Uh, uh, the specific site of interest is, the, uh, is uh, mutated to UAG amber codon. Then to, and this plasmid is co-transfected together with the second plasmid carrying suppressor tRNA and amino acid tRNA synthesis, uh, which can incorporate paraventylphenylalanine into amber position. Then uh, to in mammalian cells, then uh, protein was uh, expressed, uh, expressed, and in that expressed protein paraventylphenylalanine is inserted to the specific point of interest. Then, after UV irradiation, uh, para, uh, ne neighboring atom, any neighboring atom to the, uh, around the paraventylphenylalanine, between any neighboring atom and paraventylphenylalanine, there is a cross -link, uh, uh, covalent cross-linking. So, in this way, uh, side, uh, we use the cross-linking of CD, uh, CD38 uh, focusing on specific site. After uh, checking the 14 design variants, uh, we obtained three, three variants su uh, sufficiently uh, expressed for the analysis. So, uh, Barin 292 and uh, Roisin 135 which uh, should come to the uh, type two interface, and D64 and I65, which should come to uh, type one interface. Then uh, this, uh, 
by UV irradiation, uh, we could observe the cross-linked product. Then uh, confirm that uh, using two types of uh, tag, FRAC tag and MIC tag, and we confirm that the, uh, these bands are really uh, uh, due to the homo interaction of CD38 proteins. So the cross-linking occurs between CD38 molecules, and the type 1 and type 2 interactions are involved suggesting the tetramization of CD38 on the cell surface. So we also observed a faint but uh, significant band corresponding to the tetroma in the, on the cell surface. And we next, we checked the, uh, the site-specific oligo, uh, oligosaccharide analysis. Uh, uh, as a result, unexpected, unexpected uh, so CD38 has four glycosylation sites. So the oligosaccharide moiety as attached to each uh, site uh, separately uh, identified by mass spectroscopy. Then as a result, only oligosaccharide attached to N213 residues remained as a high mannose type. So uh, two, uh, N213 uh, is placed here, so it's uh, not accessible to the processing enzyme when CD38 uh, form a tetramer. So this, uh, this uh, processing of any glycan of CD38 is compatible with tetramization. So for, uh, these results suggest that uh, Tetramer structure deduced from the crystal packing is uh, probably uh, uh, occur on the cell surface of CD38. So then we check the functional significance of tetramization. Uh, evaluation, of C evaluation of the significance of the tetramization of CD38 on the cell surface, we uh, uh, use this, these criteria. To impair the type 1 interface, we use the G68E mutation. To affect the type 3 interface, we use the C-terminal deletion or uh, uh, mutation of disulfide uh, linkage around C, uh, C terminus. And both type 1 and type 3 interface are crucial for the internalization or uh, tetramization of CD38, uh, tetramization on the cell surface. So if this uh, treatment affects the uh, functional aspect, then uh, it suggested that tetramization uh, uh, assembly is important for that, uh, uh, on that function. So this is the catalytic site of CD38. And this, uh, uh, this corresponding residues are colored in red in this uh, in this uh, figure. Then, uh, although the C, terminal, C terminus or G68 is uh, separate, far from the uh, uh, catalytic site, but the mutation, such mutation, uh, lost the catalytic activity. So the tetramer structure is required for the catalytic activity of CG38 in A20 cells. And then this is the preparation of detergent-resistant membranes. Although detergent-resistant membranes is, uh, uh, should be carefully considered, uh, carefully distinguished with repeat labs, but the detergent-resistant membrane is a very, impo uh, is a very useful uh, um, properties to uh, survey the protein localization within the membrane. Then uh, we compare the A20, uh, CD, full length CD38 and trunc C terminal truncated CD38 expressed in A20 cells. Then uh, this is a drum fraction, and drum fraction, this is bottom fraction. So the tetra, uh, tetramer, uh, uh, C terminal truncation reduced the amount of CD38 in drum, recovered in drums. So uh, it is suggested that the tetramer structure is required for the association of CD38 with drum in A20 cells. 
So the both catalytic activity and uh, uh, pewter table repeat draft association of CD38 is uh, uh, depend on the uh, tetramization of CD38. Then the effect of glycosylation. The previous slide, uh, in the previous slide, CD38 was fully glycosylated. But in this case, the CD38 was uh, non-glycosylated. In that case, uh, we compare full length and truncated CD38 again. Then the result was completely different. In that case, C-terminal truncation did not alter the amount of non-glycosylated CD38 in DRAM. So the effect of C-terminal truncation was not observed in the absence of glycosylation. So the, uh, this is the, uh, uh, this, this shows the uh, oligosaccharide moiety attached to the any glycosylation site on the tetramer structure. Then uh, oh, type four interaction is here. So if this oligosaccharide moiety is here, then type four interaction is not possible. But without glycosylation, this interaction is possible even in the, on the cell surface. So the absence of any glycan attached to N104 and N223 enables the formation of type four interaction in the case of cell surface CD38. So the N glycan probably regulates the assembly of CD38 on the cell surface by inhibiting the aggregating type 4 interaction. That is our uh, hypothesis. So the full, in the case of full length, uh, uh, in, the, in the case of uh, glycosylated CD38, the C-terminal truncation uh, disrupts the, uh, or weaken the tetramer structure. So the clustering dependent uh, recruitment to uh, drums is decreased. But in the, no, in the case of non-glycosylated CD38, even in the case of C-terminal truncation, uh, due to the aggregating type 4 interaction, CD38 still re, can still remain to, as a tetramer. So the clustering dependent uh, recruitment is uh, unchanged. So uh, this, is the, this slide shows a summary of our study. So uh, although the monomer structure topology was uh, uh, conserved, the assembly is changed from dimer to tetramer during uh, evolution. So the CD38 may have acquired a raft association activity in addition to enzymatic activity, so become multifunctional protein. Then, uh, glycosylation prevents the uh, further self-association of tetramer. So this uh, work is in collaboration with Tokyo Medical Dental University, Riken SSBC, and National Institute of Health Science, Musashino University, uh, University of Toyama, Riken uh, Brain Research Institute, and University of Tokyo. Thank you for your attention. I have two questions. Um, one is uh, you discover one site exclusively high manose. And I, I'm just wondering how you, there's one another interpretation. I think you suggest that the organization happened on the, at the cell surface. I also, I don't know how you can eliminate the possibility that because the high manos, which means it's not processed. And my question is, where is the, perhaps you form a dimer, just block that, that uh, high manos so that stay as a high manos when you go to the Cisco, and then just the rest of them can be processed. So I don't know how you eliminate that possibility. Thank you, for, thank you for the question. Uh, actually, we can't eliminate such uh, possibility. So, uh, we, uh, so uh, photo cross-linking method is 
basically applicable to the any position in the cell. So uh, if we uh, if we uh, stop the quit the transport of mm -hmm. uh, uh, synthesizing CD thirty eight right. to locate ER or goals, then uh, we should. Uh, I think uh, we can uh, analyze more uh, in detail in, and mm -hmm. probably. Without such uh, ex uh, experiment, I can't sure. uh, answer. Sure. Uh, my second please. question is about uh, take out asparagine to study the effect of inglycosylation. It's uh, I'm concerned about that approach, and uh, because, as you know, inglycan is important for the protein folding, and I wonder if you could just minimize the N-glycosylation by take away the um, MGAT1 so that you have a small amount of the, just a, you know, pen, you know, mannose 5 so that you can minimize the bulky carbohydrate effect. Uh, sorry, I, mm, I'm sorry, I can't understand your uh, question. So, uh, uh, N-glucose race, so you, your question is you, that... You, you one of the, the, the way you study the road of N-glycan on this assembly, mm -hmm. and you remove the asparagine, mm -hmm. mutate it, and, uh, which means you don't make any N-glycan, uh, which means the protein folding is going to be affected. Uh, so how, how do you uh, avoid that, that uh, problem? Yes, uh, I understand. Yeah, now I understand your question, but uh, probably it's uh, for the glucose, for the crystallization, uh, it's a uh, realistic site uh, for the crystallization. We should remove, uh, re eliminate uh, uh, oligosaccharides. So mm, probably, Based result from um, crystallography should be assessed by another method. So, uh, so pr probably so. Thank you. Uh, I was intrigued by your concept of uh, crystal packing, and your diagram uh, reminded me of a, a man dancing with a beautiful young lady. And it's the man has total control over the actual movement of the lady. So this gives me an idea that maybe in the formation of the dimers, uh, is there a conformational change that these things come together? Or possibility they are facilitated by other molecules, for example, ubiqu ubiquitin enzymes or other kinds of uh, glycoproteins that bring them together? It's for the crystallization, during the crystallization, probably uh, some form that has advantage to be crystallized is yeah. accumulated. Yeah. So, so even there, if you think there's a, uh, a conformational change? Mm. Or is it facilitated by the other molecules bringing them together? Mm. Uh, if the... Uh, and, uh, Yes, conformational change. Mm. Yes, <laughs> uh, or uh, uh, other. You uh, may no. not have the data, mm. but I'm just thinking ahead in terms of how this may happen uh, uh, based on your concept of crystal packing. Mm. You can speculate. If, yeah, yes, uh, if. Uh, uh, mm, I, I think it's very difficult to answer, but uh, in our case, the C-terminal uh, deletion, uh, uh, e without C-terminal deletion, so the uh, molecules are very sticky, yeah. so uh, to make uh, amorphous uh, aggregates, so it's not crystallized. So that's, uh, so the, uh, uh, so the to preventing the sticky uh, interface is the 
in our case, advantage for the uh, good crystal packing. So, um, so uh, the, you, usually we have, uh, sometimes we have uh, different crystal packing from the same sample. So, uh, but in our case, we have only one sample. But so, uh, if uh, if we uh, can uh, compare the several several uh, crystals, then uh, we can say some uh, we can say about such conformational change. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. Very very nice work. Not the case. I'd like to thank you again very much for this very fine study.